So this is my infinite scoop form deck. So let's go through the list. One copy, I mean four copies of Lotus Cobra, four copies of Prosperous Innkeeper, four copies of Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort, four copies of Scoot Swarm, four copies of Bergy God of Storytelling, four copies of Grinning Ignis, four copies of Ashia Soul of the Wild, four copies of Burn Down the House, four copies of Light Up the Night, four copies of Crackle with Power, four copies of Mountain, four copies of Forest, four copies of Crag Crown Pathway, four copies of Highland Forest, Four copies of Rockfall Valley. So 20 lands and about uh, 16 more mana sources through our creatures. So the main engine of the of the deck is the Bergy God of Storytelling and Grinning Ignis loop. This allows us to play Grinning Ignis over and over and over again because uh, when you play him, uh, Bergy God of Storytelling will give you one red mana. That one red mana can be used for Grinning Ignis to bounce it back to the hand. Grinning Ignis will create one red mana, two of anything when you do that, which is exactly what you need to play him. So you play him again, which means you'll get the red mana back. Use the red mana to bounce it back to the hand and keep doing that over and over again. So there's your infinite loop. So let's use it. What we're going to use it for, if we combine it with Ashes of the Wild, when Grinning Ignis come into play, it will become a force. So this will give us infinite landfall. And Scoot Swarm has the landfall effect of whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm itself. Since uh, Ashiel will turn itself, Scoot Swarm, uh, Bergy, and Grinning Ignis into um, forces, which means that there'll be lands, um, you're pretty much guaranteed to have six lands to create a Scoot Swarm uh, token, which will have the same effect as Scoot Swarm. So every time you play a land, you'll create a token for each copy of the Scoot Swarm token. So you, uh, you know, Scoot Swarms you have. The so you're going to multiply your Scoot Swarms very quickly with this loop. Um, and uh, so the other landfall effect we have in here is Lotus Cobra. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. And we're going to <coughs> pick um, red. So every time we're using Bergy and Grinning Ignis along with Asha and Play and Lotus Cobra, we'll be creating one red mana for, from Lotus Cobra and one red mana from Bergy. But that one red mana from Bergy will be used for Grinning Ignis to keep doing, you know, keep casting him over and over again and creating that landfall loop. But Lotus Cobra will keep making the red mana so it'll stack up and we can pump that red mana into Light Up the Knights or Crack with Power and burn our opponent for however much damage we need to. If our opponent has 100 life points, I will deal him 100 damage, right? In order to do 10 damage with Crack with Power, you only need 5 mana. To do 15, you need 11 if I'm right, and to do 20 damage, you need 14 mana in order to do 20 damage with this. And of course, 1 plus X, so if you need to do 20, you'll need 21 mana in order to do 20 damage with Light Up the Knight to your opponent. Um, and then if you want infinite life, we have uh, Innkeeper. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain 1 life. And Ignis will still be a creature when it um, when it hits the field, so you'll still get a life. Just with three cards, you can get infinite life. Just Innkeeper, Bergy, and Grinning Ignis is all you'll need to gain infinite life. Uh, you could get a similar result if you have <coughs> Lotus Cobra, um, Asha, and Grinning Ignis. You can infinitely uh, play Grinning Ignis over and over again. Because every time you play Grinning Ignis, you'll create one red mana. And that one red mana will allow you to bounce a Grinning Ignis back to hand. And the reason you're creating the, the red mana is because Asha turns you know, Grinning Ignis into land, which triggers Lotus Cobra's landfall effect, which will create the red mana. You use the red mana to bounce him back to hand. And then play him by his, his own effect of the mana he creates. And then he'll become a land again, which will trigger this and just infinite loop. So these three can do the infinite 
grinning ignis loop and just combine that with uh, swoot sworn or uh, innkeeper and you know you can create infinite swoot swarms or infinite um, innkeepers so there's more than one um, way of you know going infinite but it definitely requires grinning ignis and definitely ashia for the landfall but you don't necessarily need uh, ashia if you're just doing like infinite life for example um, if you're using Bergy. So, uh, so there's that. So we have infinite life with innkeeper, infinite mana with lotus cobra, and infinite tokens, uh, infinite one one tokens with susworn. And we have uh, tuck tuck rumble fort has the effect of creatures you can try have haste, and this is what will allow us to attack in the same turn in which we make all those tokens. Because once you're ready to attack with all the tokens you made from susworn, um, you bounce grinning ignis in your hand with with his effect to create the one red mana two of anything, two colors. And that's enough to play Tuck Tuck Rumble Fort and get haste and all the tokens will have haste and you can attack all of them in the same turn. Um, Ashia Soul gets uh, power and toughness is equal to the number of lands you control, including itself. And of course, I'll count all your creatures that you turn into lands. So he can get pretty big, uh, pretty fast. Um, and you know all your creatures that are not tokens become forest lands in addition to the other types so that's part of why we uh, get the landfall ability burn down the house um, <coughs> um, we well let me let me finish let me explain the uh, turn four infinite life so if you want to gain infinite life on turn four what you want to do is play uh, Grinning Ignis on turn 3. And then on turn 4, hopefully you draw a land, play a land. So, so you have 4 land. Because you're going to need 4. Use 1 red uh, mana source to bounce Grinning Ignis back to your hand. So now you have um, 1 red, 2 of anything, which is enough to play Bergy God of Storytelling. You'll play her. Then you'll play uh, Innkeeper for 1 color is 1... Well, one green and he'll create a treasure token and sh um, Bergy will trigger and give you one red mana and you have the treasure token plus you'll still have that one land because you only use three lands this turn um, you know the one red for Ignis and the two uh, for Innkeeper so now you have three mana sources use them to play Grinning Ignis which will give you red mana you'll gain a life and then use the red mana to bounce somebody to hand and then just keep doing that loop over again you'll keep infinitely gaining life so you get the idea of the infinite combo so now <clears throat> burn down the house is you know the next board wipe it deals five damage to each creature and each planeswalker so it's good for getting rid of planeswalkers as well as it has the ability to create one one red devil creature tokens when they have uh, with the ability that when they die they deal one damage to any target and they have haste on uh, to end of turn when they come in <clears throat> so if uh, and you know the fact that you can you can put three one ones on the field to you know attack your opponent with in the same turn in which you play the tokens are you know awesome in itself. When they die, they deal a, a damage, and you can use it to take down planeswalkers. Uh, you know your opponent, uh, certain battle cards. You can use the tokens. Um, like I've used them a couple times to obviously um, as a shield. Like I use them to to block attacks. From stuff that don't have trample, obviously, right? But I've used, you know, I use it against stuff like that that has death touch, uh, double strike, uh, first strike. Especially if the if, if the card has um, um, one toughness, um, it's useful to block something because I've done that before. Something had a uh, first strike, but had uh, had three power, one one toughness, but it had first strike. So I use one of the tokens to block it. Obviously, the first strike took takes down the token, but then the token's effect will trigger, and I was able to kill the three one with the effect. I've used the tokens um, against um, double strike cards. So when it when the token dies from the first attack, I use the effect to kill them before they can do a second attack. <clears throat> I've also used the tokens to block one uh, attacker. So I can deal damage 
uh, with the tokens. And then when the tokens died, use the effects to deal the final uh, damage to finish off the creature. So with the three tokens, you can take down something that has six toughness. So I've done that before. Um, using the tokens with uh, innkeepers, you can gain three life instantly. It's something you can do. <clears throat> then we have uh, light up the night. You can use it as a, as a kill spell. Um, if you use it on a creature or planeswalker, it deals one extra damage, which is nice. So you can deal more damage than what you pay for this. Uh, but if you use it against your opponent, then you have to pay the full price. So if you want to do 20 damage, you need to pay 21 mana. Um, but if you need to deal 20 damage to a creature for some reason, right? Uh, you only need uh, 19 mana. So that's the difference. Um, this deck doesn't have a Planeswalker, so we don't get the flashback part. And Crackle of Power. Crackle of Power can do uh, 10 damage. To up to two targets if you use if you use eight mana um, <coughs> if you I think it's 14 mana in order to do 20 damage um, I forgot how many targets I think up to five targets or something like that I forgot what the math was but I only focus on um, sometimes I pay five mana for this card to do five damage to a, a, a single target like a, Planeswalker, a creature, or my opponent. But typically, the goal is to get my opponent down to 10 life and then use this to pay 8 and deal my opponent 10 and deal something else 10 <clears throat> so I can win. So I've done that many of times. That's one of the main ways I win this with this deck, ironically, is through Crackle of Power more often than Scoot Swarm. Scoot Swarm tends to be more def a defense. Like, I tend to get, get enough. Uh, Scoot Swarm tokens to block attacks um, and then of course the life gain strategy so I tend to do the infinite life I make a couple of tokens here and there I have done the, the full combo before but I don't do it as often it depends on you know <sighs> my hands if I draw enough lands every you know every turn to make sure that I could play the strategy off but typically any uh, I, I do I do chip damage, get my opponent down to uh, ten, and just finish them off with uh, crack with power. But there are other options. If you can set up the infinite mana uh, combo, then you can just use that up the sky and do a lot of damage. You know, there's a lot of decks out there that have life gaining <coughs> strategies. So, um, like for example, this deck has infinite life gaining capabilities, so the ability to do infinite. Uh, mana so you can do infinite burn as it were you know comes in handy in those types of situations where you're going up against somebody who gains a lot of life so I've played against a lot of of those decks where you gain life and then the creatures get stronger gain life creatures get stronger and yeah so it's good that I have the ability to be able to output a lot more than just a maximum of 20 damage I could output even more using this deck strategy and the mana base I try to make sure that it is you know, everything comes into play. Untapped, the only one that comes into play guaranteed tap is Highland Forest, but we only have four copies, so don't want more than that from my experience. Any 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 more than four lands that come into play tap tends to be a problem. The good thing about Rock uh, Rockfall Valley is that after turn two, after your second land, it just it doesn't come into play tap so then everything here you see doesn't come into play tap so you always you never want to be in a scenario where you you draw your fifth land that you needed for your burn down the house and then it just so happens to be this one it can happen but typically it, it shouldn't be likely that you draw this one when you really need to play this and that's the end of the video